During the Wii and Wii U era, we saw the revival of the 2D Mario formula with games like New Super Mario Bros. Wii, 2, and U. And today we're going to take a look at the most recent entry in the series for the Wii U, since there are some weird things in the files of this game. Now, New Super Mario Bros. U is a side-scrolling 2.5D platformer and a launch title for the console. The game is originally based off its predecessors and most notably Super Mario World. The game uses new, more detailed background styles and models and introduces the Flying Squirrel power-up, acquired by Mario and his friends from an item called the Super Acorn, as well as utilizing the Wii U gamepad in a boost mode. They tried to do some new and cool things with this IP. However, there are also a ton of things that didn't really work out for them. Besides that, there are also a lot of things from the older games, like graphics and music. So, let's have a look at it all, shall we? First up, some early Meringue Cloud's tileset edges that were never used. Now, World 7 Airship contains a broken version of this design, which is displayed when the mechanical Bowser hand punches through the ground. They are not used anywhere else in the game. Due to the structure of the game, though, there are corresponding tiles for this purpose in the underground and lava tile sets, which go unused. The first version has a lighter color, and you can also see that the pattern of the crack is slightly different. We aren't sure why they replaced it since they're extremely similar to each other, and there's no clear reason for it not being suitable. There's also no info on it at all, so they must have changed it because the other looked better in their eyes. Inside the files is also an early version of the world map, however, it looks a bit weird. It's a hastily slapped together map overview and was likely a placeholder graphic until a proper one was created. Despite its rough appearance, the map has all the features of the final map, including Between World shortcuts and the Super Star Road. However, the entirety of Super Star Road is present on this map, while in the actual game, Super Star Road is in a completely different map, and only a small star with an extra dimensional portal is present in that area. But this is a simple version after all, so, of course, it changed quite a lot. There are also some level icons in the folder that were never used, the pepper icon and the star icon. These are used for secret courses, which act as shortcuts between worlds, however, these never saw the light of day. There are also two unused duplicates of the Peach's Castle level icon for some odd reason. Yet again, we have no idea what these were used for, but it could be alternate designs for when they were making the world map. Now another type of leftover graphic in the files is actually quite cool and it looks really, really good. However, there is something strange about it all. There are a number of unused backgrounds and by the looks of it, they're all from New Super Mario Bros. Wii. The standard grassland background, the desert cave, however, the color is wrong since the file name implies that it should be yellow and the castle, but the one they use in the game has a slightly different romanization, which may be why this one was forgotten about. It's unknown why these are in the files at all, but it could be because they reused a lot of assets from that game and just polished them. So maybe they had a similar plan in mind when it came to these backgrounds. A little tweak here and there, and then reuse it. Now there are also some unused and early levels, and some of these are quite different from the final product and are also quite weird. 11-2 SARC, which is the second coin battle stage, contains an unfinished water area, while the overall shape is complete, the tiling and object placement is not. Several tiles outside of the zone are missing, and some were even placed outside of the level. The area does not fit at all with the rest of the coin battle level, and is probably just a leftover from when someone used the stage's file. This is strangely consistent with the new Super Mario Bros. Wii, which had the same thing happen with the same stage. The stage also introduces the perfectly working Vertical Dragon Eel, and the underwater background renders incorrectly above a certain height, because it wasn't designed for a vertical level such as this one. Clearly, a project that they had been working on for some time that didn't turn out to be what they wanted it to be. The level looks quite normal, nothing weird or out of the ordinary, and the layout actually looks quite good, but it's just a bit empty, they could have added more. However, there are a ton of early versions of coin levels in the files, with minor things changed here and there. So clearly, they had a hard time polishing these levels and settling on a final layout, which might explain this water level that was never finished. Besides that, we're still a bit confused on where this level would have been used. Is it for a normal level or a coin level? Who knows? 
Now another weird thing is found in 4-25.SARC. Here you can find an earlier layout of the credit stage, seemingly meant to occur inside as opposed to the final game's outdoor setting. It crashes due to Sprite 556 not working in the game. And another notable thing is that the background music is assigned to ID3, which is the underwater theme. Certainly a bit of a weird design and music choice, and besides that, it doesn't even work. We aren't sure what they were planning with this one, but it clearly didn't work out for them. Maybe an underwater themed credit stage? Nothing of the earlier design remained except for the platforms. Even the location was completely changed. Now for a final little thing. This isn't from a level or anything, but it's actually alternate behavior for certain enemies. Because there's different coding for two enemies. First, the munchers, who can be walked on by Yoshi without harm like in Super Mario World, and medium Goombas and large Goombas that split into smaller ones, like when stomped on if Yoshi tries to eat them. Two rather interesting choices that would have an effect on the levels to an extent. The first one would change the platforming, and the other would make Yoshi a lot weaker towards Goombas, since he can't take them out in one go. However, by the looks of it, they didn't want to change these aspects of the game, so they left them out. And now you know what kind of strange and interesting things they left out of the game. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell, and be sure to keep an eye on the channel because more videos like this will be coming soon, and even more casual versus speedrun, and an entirely new series!